Hi, welcome back. Thanks for coming in. We're going to have a conversation today with Susan Waldenstrom, my good friend from Stillwater, Minnesota. Thanks for having me. I'm here in my offices at Stillwater Calm Care. I'm just excited to be part of your video today. Well, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm so glad to see you. It sounds so formal. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> but um, I'm Marie Morin. I'm a therapist and a wellness coach. And we are going to talk about four tips on how to make time for yourself. Susan and I are really good friends and we love doing stuff like this, but actually I have to twist her arm to do these <laughs> videos, but she always loves it when I twist her arm anyway, don't you, Susan? I do. And you know why? Because this just leads me right into the first one. Can I, can I do that? Can I go there? It's of course. Of priorities, because I do it because I prioritize my friendship with you. So that is part of the whole thing in um, making time for ourselves is having our priorities set correctly. Um, I, we've talked about this before in a different discussion, how the number one determining factor of health and happiness as we age isn't how often we go to the gym. It's not the veggies we eat. It's not meditating constantly. It's not any of that. It's the connections we have with people. So when we prioritize that, it helps us be health, healthy and happy. So that's amazing. That's like a multitasking dreamer can come true, you know? Um, so prioritizing and prioritizing yourself, but like this is a double whammy because I get to spend time with you because I'm prioritizing you, but it's a fun thing for me. So, you know, it's a multitasking thing. But anyway, I think um, prioritizing yourself is really tough, especially if you're a mom, you're a business owner, you're, you know, whatever. It's really hard to not put yourself, you know, down the list so far that you really suffer because of it. Because sometimes when we put ourselves at the top of the list, we think it's selfish. And it's really tough to find balance like that. So I think... Um, what we have to do is we have to check in with ourselves frequently to just really figure out and um, put it in our planner or make a list, make choices, make plans going forward that really focus on what we need for ourselves. Um, sometimes I talk to people that are grumbling about their spouse because they think, oh, they don't know what is important to me, but it's because they haven't prioritized themselves enough to be clear about their needs. It's something as simple as that. Um, you know, in our type of business, both of us can be so busy and we give so much of ourselves to our clients and to the business that we have that sometimes we just need a break. And so, you know, you and I are known to just take off. And it's great if you have somebody you can travel with and you get out of town and you don't focus on your business while you're away for a few days because it's like feeding into your soul. It's an amazing thing to take a few days away, come back with a fresh perspective, new energy, and you know, then you can really get things done. So I would say my number one top thing is really prioritizing yourself and valuing what your priorities in your life are. Friends and family should be top. There's mm -hmm. a little cheat for you. <laughs> I agree. I think that, well, thank you so much for prioritizing yeah. and making time to um, hang with me. You definitely are the queen of the multitasking, though. <laughs> That's you. You're the multi multitasking queen. All right. So my tip, um, this is not my top tip, but this is one of the big ones, is learning how to do a relaxing breath, okay? Because we talked about this in another video about how to make time for yourself when you're busy. But how to make time for yourself generally is to get your perspective straight. And a lot of times, since we're on the go, 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 got to do, got to do, what's, what's going to happen in 20 minutes? What's going to happen in a day? Oh my God, did I do this? We are definitely stressed. And when we're stressed, we're probably not thinking as clearly. So making time for yourself means bringing your tension level down, bringing your stress level down and taking a moment by doing a relaxing breath. And this is so simple. I love it. And you could take it wherever you go. No one has to know you're doing it. And it's called the four, seven, eight method. There's lots of different breaths and you can find um, my diaphragmatic breathing on my 
um, YouTube channel, but this one is inhaling and exhaling through your nose and you're gonna inhale to the count of four, hold for seven and exhale eight. When you make a, um, a longer exhalation, then what's happening is, is that you're really bringing calm down. It's sort of settling your, um, what's that nerve again? Oh my gosh, it just went out of my head. Um, the vagus nerve. There you go, the vagus nerve. It's helping. I feel like vagus. it's a game show. We're on a game I show. We're on a, <laughs> why I, I mean, I study these things and then when I really need the info, it's like, anybody else do that? You can't remember important words. But what it does is it links the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And all that really means in good old English is it brings you to a state out of stress into rest and digest. And when that happens, you recognize, aha, uh -huh, I need time for myself. This is taking time for myself, just settling. I like that tip. That went good. Even though I forgot the name, I'm just <laughs> going to pour grace on myself for being forgetful <clears throat> on occasion. Okay. Tip number three, you go girl. Okay. So this, you know, they all kind of link together. This is a really, really important thing. And I'm actually going to do um, a study here in Stillwater with a group of people starting in January that is uh, in part focusing on this, creating margins. So, you know, when you have, when you have a paper, it's a lot easier to read when you have white space on the sides, margins, it makes something easier to read and more clear in its design and all of that. Um, when I was first out of college, I got hired, I got brought in for an interview at a marketing job and they said, we we're so intrigued by your resume because you had a good amount of white space and it just had such a presence and we wanted to meet you. That's how it is in real life too. People who have margins were naturally attracted to because they're peaceful. They're able to prioritize themselves they're able to balance their lives. They're able to give to their family and their friends and their job because they have margins. They have healthy boundaries is what that really means. And so when we have margins, what it means is this, is that we don't sign our kids up for 14 different sports, right? Imagine that. Hello, we don't say yes to everything that people are asking us to do. We know what our priorities are and we have learned how to say no, we should do another video on that because that's a skill that we have to develop. But when we can say no and prioritize things, then we can create margins in our life. So what that means is that we have time to just sit and rest. We have time to reflect. Often people come in here and they are getting a massage. And if they are awake and they wanna talk or whatever, it's the only time they've had all week to think about what's going on. Maybe it's their relationship, maybe it's their goals, maybe it's their work, maybe it's what's going on with parenting, anything. We get so busy, we don't really pay attention to um, finding time to think things through, to mm -hmm. sort it out. So when we create margins, we intentionally create downtime. We kind of have gotten ourselves caught up in this idea that we have to be really busy to be effective or important or whatever it is. And what I'm saying is, in order to be effective in what we're doing, we need to create downtime. So when um, we don't have to rush out the door to everything, that's because we've created margins, right? When we have an afternoon where we don't have any big plans, but we're available for in a glass of wine with a friend, or you know, I have a friend who went to Costco with me the other day, and it was so fun shopping with a girlfriend at Costco, right? And she was only available because she has margins. If I called up everybody and said, hey, do you want to go to Costco? Everybody's busy. Mm -hmm. So when we have margins, it gives us flexibility to enjoy our lives more. That's huge. That is huge. I love that. I love the idea of margins. You've got to trademark that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write a book on it. I think it's a perfect idea, but make sure you keep margins. Right. Right. When you're getting more busy. 
And you know what? This is also linked to my tip, which is tip number four, which is to make sure you have a daily routine because doing a daily routine keeps your perspective on what's important because you're like, you know what? What's important is making sure I am taking time for myself. I'm going to do a morning meditation. I'm going to do a breathing exercise. I'm going to do a prayer I'm going to do an intention. I'm going to do a gratitude journal. And you don't have to get a, get caught up in the idea of being productive in your self-care, right? Because that whole idea of wanting to do a lot, we know that people that want to be really productive and do a lot of stuff actually are less productive than those people who take time to have margins, they don't do as much. The productivity level is reduced. So the idea is, isn't it funny? It's sort of like an, it wouldn't be called an oxymoron. It it's almost sort of a, is, it's kind of ironic. It's, it's ironic. Uh -huh. Yes, because yeah. in order to be more productive, we need to take a little more time for us, do less. And in that doing less, in your daily routine, pour grace on yourself. If you wake up one your morning and you're like, oh, there is no way I could do a meditation, then it's okay. Pour mm -hmm. grace on yourself. Instead, just do some deep breathing. Do a prayer, quick prayer. Doesn't have to be a two hour prayer, but mm -hmm. some kind of routine where you're um, arming yourself with the day and saying, this is what's important to me. Something that means I'm taking time for myself. And so I think that those are really good. Fantastic. Don't you love that daily yeah. routines? Right. I love it. And you know what? I mean, think about, there are some, do you see that study? I think it was out of Sweden and they were doing research on how productive students are when they have regular recess. So um, they found that they were more productive with more recess. And that students that know that they don't have homework, because there are a lot of schools now that are realizing homework is more burdensome than productive. So then they don't assign homework. So now you have kids who have more time to get up and run around during the day and know that their evening isn't going to be six hours of homework. That's pretty interesting because then they find that they're more productive. And then they've also done research to show that a four hour or four four hour work week. Can you imagine a four hour work week? A four day work week instead of a five day work week. People are more productive. They get things done. I think since COVID, they've even figured out that the routine for people who are working from home instead of having to do an hour commute to get into the office allows them to be more productive. So companies mm. were so worried in the beginning, remember that, about, oh my gosh, we have all these people that are just be slacking off all day long working from home. Well, now they're finding actually they're more productive than they anticipated. So you, they have their routine that doesn't involve, you know, two hours of drive time. So then they can just be much more productive and available for meetings and whatever. They get a lot more done. They're happier at home. They can wear their slippers. So, you know, it is pretty interesting how we can get into these routines that may on the surface look like we're less productive when in actuality, we've created margins, we've created a routine, we've prioritized ourselves, and it allows us to actually, you know, do better, get more stuff done and have higher quality uh, work and higher quality of life. Exactly. Very well said. And I don't have to do my summary because you just did it. Oh, and that's amazing. All right. Look at that. We're thinking on the same page. We are. <laughs> All right. So that's our video Four tips on how to make time for you. And we hope you like this video. Please hit the like, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about this video. And what do you do to take time for yourself? We'd love to know. Okay, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.